Hey guys, checking in. I'm back from Mexico. Me and the SWM survived the full pole, man. Ensenada all the way down to Cabo, almost 1,400 miles. Took us eight days. Our shortest day was right at 100 miles. It was crazy. I mean, first thing right off the bat that really blew my mind was just, it really amazed me how much the Baja Peninsula was able to test man and machine. I mean, I'd been down to Baja once or twice before, but hadn't really experienced like everything that we experienced on this high desert adventures trip. So I mean, everything from first gear, super tight, trialsy single track, all the way to sixth gear, 102 miles an hour down the beach. I mean, just blew my mind. This bike had to endure everything, and I'm gonna walk you guys through uh, what I experienced, the goods and the bads with the bike, and just kind of talk about um, you know what I found out and uh, what I want to do moving forward. So let's start covering it. All right, so as you guys saw in episode five, I mean, the first three days of our Baja trip was just nothing but super tight, cool single track. I'm talking switchbacks, some wheelie turns, uh, rock drop-offs, I mean, everything. And first, second gear, um, really was thinking, you know, this would probably be terrain for a 300 two-stroke, but honestly, this RS500 just ate it up. I mean, I, I was really impressed with how well everything worked. It was happy chugging all the way down to nothing um, and just getting moving again. Didn't have any overheating issues and the slow speed stuff. Uh, no flame outs thanks to the recluse. And uh, wow, I was just super impressed with how that went. Um, as we worked our way down the peninsula, uh, we ran into less and less single track and basically we just started going faster and faster. So really got into, um, I would pretty much wore out six gear. I like to joke. I mean, we were just ripping the, during the second half of the trip. Uh, 102 miles an hour down the beach was the fastest I got going. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, also, we started riding some old Baja 1000 race course and we were in three and a half, four foot plus deep whoops and uh, it was just eating this up. So, I mean, again, what a test to go from super slow speed stuff to you know, how fast you wanna hang out the back, how much you willing to let it hang out. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a walk around and just talk about uh, some of the points of the bike. I mean, from episode three and four, I was giving you some rundown of what I was doing preparing the bike for the trip. But uh, now that I'm back, I wanna tell you how this stuff worked. So let's check it out. First thing I wanna talk about is uh, just the suspension mods we did with 707 suspension. Uh, episode four was completely dedicated to what we did there. But uh, I gotta say, I mean, man, these the fork and shock on this bike got a workout, absolute workout and really got tested in um, every bit of terrain. Like I was saying, first few days, super tight single track, lots of rocky drop-offs, um, super slow speed, and uh, it, it worked amazing. And then as we moved in later in the week, we got into some huge whoops, huge whoops. And uh, I mean, even at 65, 70 miles an hour, six gear, this stuff was just super balanced. I was blown away, happy with it. So the bike never once got sideways or out of control and uh, just was kind of up to me, like how fast do I want to go? So that worked amazing. Okay, kind of tying in with the suspension was just these Fast Company Flex Bars. I mean, again, this is basically suspension built into your handlebars and I was so glad to have these. Um, there's a lot of real rough trails and roads in Baja, lots of rocks and potholes that are just constantly beating your shoulders and, and wrists and elbows into submission. But with these things, I was just loving it. So I saw lots of other riders that were running stock bars and they were shaking their hands out, shaking their wrists, you know, after a real rocky section. And I never once had to shake my hands out. I mean, it just worked perfect. Um, super pumped on those. Okay, so the other thing we covered in episode three was just the installation of the Recluse Core EXP 3.0 Auto Clutch. And again, huge upgrade over stock. I was really pleased to have this. Um, as you guys saw in episode five, I hope you had a chance to check out all of the HDA day highlights that I filmed. But I mean, right away, the one-handed operation, not having to touch the clutch lever, made it just super easy for me to run the camera the whole time. So, I mean, that worked amazing. Um, also, just super nice not to have to worry about stalling it the first couple days 
Um, you know, usually with the big 500, you could have some issues with like flaming out or whatnot when you're riding more trialsy stuff, but never miss the beat. Now, I did have to adjust it a couple times during the trip. Uh, I think this was more due to me just not setting the free play gain correctly at the beginning of the trip. So I'm, I don't feel that it was anything actually wrong with the recluse. It was just me like not quite setting it up um, the way it should have been. So want to give a huge shout out to recluse for just unreal customer service i mean i called these guys in the middle of absolutely nowhere um i couldn't even believe i had any cell service i had one bar pacific ocean sitting right there and we hadn't seen anything even re rep or even remotely close to a car or a house in like an hour and looked down had one bar of service called up recluse and they helped me uh walk through what i needed to do to get it working better right there on the side of the trail so huge shout out to those guys thank you excellent excellent mod here all right, and then with the funnel web air filter, I mean, that was awesome too, because I spent a lot less time changing air filters, cleaning air filters, and dealing with uh, filter skins. So let's take a look uh, at what this thing looks like here. So last couple days, uh, we weren't, weren't really in the dust too much. This is actually still super clean. But what was awesome about this is with this pyramid design, it essentially holds, or it essentially has twice the surface area of a normal filter. So that being said, I was able to clean it half as often. Um, I was going three, four days on a filter, which was great. I mean, everyone that was running like a conventional filter was at least doing a filter skin a day, if not like a complete filter change. So that was great. Uh, I also showed you guys too how I could pull the filter out and basically rub my hand over it and knock all of the dirt loose. So that's definitely not something that you can do with a conventional filter, and that made it super cool. I'd run these filters two days, pull them out, throw some gloves on, and just wipe my hands all over the outside of the filter, all over those pyramids, and then knock all the dust loose, basically knocking it right out of the filter, and it was way, way cleaner than when I had started, so I could just throw it back in. Um, like I told you guys before, funnel web filters, they make them for everything. So it's not just SWM. If you have any other bikes or your friend's bikes, uh, they have applications for almost everything out there. So this is an excellent investment that I would recommend. I think you guys saw in episode five and in some of those recap videos that on the eighth day of the tour, we ran into some bad fuel. So we got uh, a load of bad fuel from a gas station somewhere that was full of water and sediment and just all sorts of nasty stuff. And so pretty much all the bikes were upside down on the trail getting fuel dumped out, having the fuel filters taken apart and everything else. So I got just a little bit of water and sediment in mine. Um, I was one of the last guys to fill, so as such, uh, I didn't get a ton of the water and whatnot, but still the, the zip tie quick disconnect fuel filter I really think saved me. Uh, I never had to pull it apart during the trip, but just having that peace of mind that I could quickly and easily just hit this button here, pull the whole thing apart and either clean or pop new fuel filters in, that was awesome. So I didn't need to do that, but uh, that being said, I didn't have any fuel issues the whole time. So this, this filter did a great job of keeping all the nasty sediment out of my injector. Uh, also, talked a little bit before about the twin air fuel stock so this thing was the first line of defense essentially for all the nasties and the fuel down there so i'm going to pull this guy out and you can i think you guys should be able to see here i'll hold it up to the light but all that crap right there was in the fuel and i mean for the most part we were fuel fueling at the gas stations down there so it wasn't like we were getting this out of a dirty barrel or anything else um and these are pretty quality stations that we were at you know so except for the one day where we really got a bad load of fuel i mean i i feel like you could see this much stuff in a fuel station in the u.s too so this twin air fuel stock definitely paid for itself um this is a definitely a great upgrade i'd suggest you guys getting um as you can see here as i'm holding it around i hope you guys can see it but yeah there we go just full of crud which is great um, because that kept that from going down into my tank and through all my fuel filters. So excellent stuff there from Twin Air. All right, so I mean, like I said, this was a true test of man and machine. I mean, there is, uh, we unfortunately had a health issue with one of the riders on the first day 
had to life flight him out. So it wasn't easy on the riders. Um, he's luckily okay, he'll make a full recovery, but it was real scary at the time. Uh, also, lots of broken bikes. I mean, I'm not gonna be pointing out any brands because that's not what this is all about, but you know, there was uh, th three blown motors and some uh, dead batteries. There was some fuel issues. There were um, some electric start motors that died. I mean, so this was testing everything. Now, really the only issue I had, I told you guys how I, I had to adjust the recluse on the first day. And again, that was my fault. I just don't think that I had the free play gain set quite right. So one thing I do want to address though is um, starting in the later days, I started to get the bike a little bit hot. I started to have some overheating issues. This was pretty interesting to me because I thought if I was gonna have overheating issues, it would have been in the slower stuff on the first three days. And that wasn't the case. So when I was going really slow, I uh, had no issues with that whatsoever. Bike stayed nice and cool. Now on days five, six, um, when we were going really fast and there's lots of loose sand, that's where I started to get the bike pretty hot. And uh, what I think it has to do with is actually just like a real heavy load, you know, being real um, sustained, long throttle and like real deep sand for a long time. That's when it started to get a little bit hot. So I've got some ideas to uh, tackle that and I'll cover that with you guys in a future episode. But what I did during the ride, just as kind of a band-aid fix, was just to pull the louvers off. So I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you're in a pinch. Um, because it definitely makes your radiators a lot more prone to damage uh, just because it doesn't have the, the plastic louvers to deflect sticks and, and rocks and whatnot. But I felt pretty confident doing it just with the oversized tank. I felt that you know this was going to provide really good protection from um, bushes and whatnot. So uh, I ended up being right with that. I didn't have any issues with uh, sticks flying up or, or anything and damaging the radiator. And I think what the cause of my overheating issue might have been is I think the uh, I think after right around day five I think my stock cooling fan quit so this does have a fan I'm not sure if you guys can see it up there but it's up there there is a stock cooling fan that that uh, comes on basically when the bike starts to get hot and I did hear it come on a few times during the first few days you know which I would expect with the real slow going that we were doing but um, after that I didn't hear it come on so I'm gonna be diving into that here and I'll let you know what I got what I find out um, it could just be something as simple as like a wire coming unplugged um, but I couldn't really reach up in there with the with the big safari tank on to troubleshoot so I'll be tearing into that too and I'll let you know what I find so let's see a couple other things I want to uh, get before my next Baja adventure um, I would like to replace the stock enduro computer uh, with the Trail Tech Voyager Pro unit. So a couple of the other riders had those. Essentially, it's like a full color touchscreen uh, enduro computer slash GPS. And what's cool with that is it it has buddy tracking. So essentially, on the the dashboard of the computer, if you will, it shows. Uh, where you are your current location and all of your buddies so there's a couple times during the tour where we got separated and it was a super cool feature for the other the riders that had the voyager pro to like look down and be like oh they're they're over here and they're moving or they're not moving whatever else so super excited to get my hands on one of those i uh, hope you guys are listening at trail tech because i think i could definitely uh put one of those to good use uh, other things i want to check out is the stock foot pegs were working really well. I didn't have any issues with grip or I didn't bend them or anything, but um, what I noticed after just riding for all day, I mean, we were out there eight, 10, 12 hours a day, standing up and going through these big whoops, is I start to feel some fatigue in my Achilles tendons and in my heels. So I wanna reach out to Fastway Pro Moto Billet and see about getting some of their um, ankle saver pegs. So basically it's their, uh, I'm interested in the Evo Air or the Evo 4 foot peg that has the ankle saving extension that comes off the back. It's basically a piece that comes off of here about this angle about this far and the whole idea is that you're able to rest your heel against that during like long days standing up or if you hit a g out really hard it keeps your arch or your ankle from overextending so i'd seen those before and wasn't really sure what they were all about until i spent all day riding in baja for eight days and now i'm super interested in trying those out so i'm gonna get a hold of the guys at fastway promo billet and see if i can't get a set to uh, throw on here and test for you guys 
Okay, so I also want to take a look at the gearing for the next time I go down to Baja. So I'm running a 13 tooth counter shaft and a 46 tooth rear sprocket. And I feel like this was the perfect gearing for the first three days. So I was using first very little, a um, couple times, but mostly second, a little bit of third. Um, once we got later in the week though, when we were really moving, I was in sixth gear like the entire time. And um, I mean, my top speed was still super high. I mean, I wasn't wanting to go much faster than 100, but uh, I just like to be able to drop the RPMs down for like sustained sections of like graded road or fast two track or when we had to jump on the black doom for a little bit i just like to drop the rpm a little bit um i just kind of felt bad i've never felt like i was screaming it but i'm just not used to like long sustained sections of like high rpm and the bike has tons of power and torque so it would be absolutely no issue to pull different gearing, pull taller gearing. So like I said, I'm at 1346 right now and I think I'm gonna try a 44 rear sprocket. So 1344, or I might try a 1448 combo. That'll end up subtracting about two or two and a half teeth overall from where I am now, which would be great. Um, that'll let me use first a little bit more in the super, super tight stuff, but it'll drop my RPMs um, for long sustained um, open stints. All right, so that wraps up episode six. Just wanted to give you guys a walk around about what I found out with the bike. So super pumped with it. Can't wait for the next adventure on it. And now I'm gonna wash it and get all this uh, Baja ocean salt off. So thanks a lot. Check you guys next time.